Hello and welcome again to Conscious TV. I'm Ian McNay and today our programme is another in the series on the Enneagram and today we're going to look more closely at Type 7 and I have with me three Type 7s in the studio. On my right is Chris and we have Daniel and we have Nina. So we're going to start with you Chris. How did you first get to hear about the Enneagram? I first got to hear about it through a friend who's uh, very much into developmental work. He, uh, he brought a book around to my house one day and said, you've got to read this, this is you. And he was showing me the type eight at the time. And uh, so I read a lot of the eights. I thought, yeah, that is a, that's definitely me, but mm, some of that's not quite you know, on the mark. Um, and then when I nudged over and read the seven, I read the seven in depth and understood the seven. I went, oh, bloody hell, yeah, that's definitely me. You know, that, 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 those traits, that, okay. those ways of being. We should explain the Enneagram, of course. There's nine different types. Mm -hmm. In fact, why don't you just tell us briefly what the Enneagram is? The way I <coughs> think of it and the way I describe it is that the Enneagram is a, is a system for psychological and, if you like, spiritual growth. So it... Um, allows you to find a it's, it's i think of it as like a road map you know a map to allow you to see uh aspects of yourself your traits the the unconscious things that you do your habits and your patterns that sort of play throughout all of your life that for the most part we are unconscious of you know we don't really become that aware of them unless we have some sort of system to to highlight them um and so i describe it as that as a system of growth so that it enables us to become more conscious of the things that we do more aware of the self what the self is so that we can move along in a more harmonious balanced way you're dealing with life and the things that that come up you know that's the way i i think of it okay and when you first saw you were a number seven mm. or realized that mm. how did that impact you how did you feel about that um uh, enlightened and psychotic at the same time yeah uh well i i thought it was uh when i first really got to understand that I, firstly it made total sense with the the, the t you know the traits of the seven the, t the way that i you know live my life the way i think the way i feel the way i interact and also the the sort of more dysfunctional side you know the things that i do when i'm stressed or where i lose energy and and this sort of thing it really highlighted so let's, that let's start with an example when you say dysfunctional and lose energy just give a practical example of that well i'll tell you what why don't we start on the good side first day because <laughs> <laughs> that's more fun and that is also very typical of type seven <laughs> exactly yeah we don't want to start on the negative side too soon so the 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 traits that you know i can really relate to being a dominant seven is that very optimistic very high energy always looking for new experiences um variety and joy and you know enjoyment and happiness and and pleasures and opportunities exactly how you come across now it's You're absolutely really fantastic yeah definitely the best place to be on the yeah. Instagram, obviously <laughs> um and then the, the sort of the the slight downside to it is um if you're continually looking for more experiences uh more pleasures more more stimulus you know then you tend to um not be able to be present in the moment as, as as much as possible and because you're constantly looking for more experiences more information more knowledge more things to 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 give you some sort of energy or to where to put your energy you um you tend to then or you can you can struggle with being in the moment because of the anxieties that you might have to face being in the moment you know the the uh the the subtle little emotional pains that we all have to deal with day in day out as, as, a, as a dominant seven you're trying to avoid those a little bit and not be here in the moment and live with those and and experience those and p potentially get the benefit from those you'll be off onto something else looking for more and more pleasure so in a way the here and now spot you know the live here now and be here now and all that caper um is uh is is, okay. is, is, is a mild challenge sometimes okay thanks it's a great start <laughs> thanks so with nina let's look at your um story how did you first hear about the enneagram well it's very similar really to chris i mean someone came along and said i think you should go on an enneagram course i think you'd enjoy it and so i went along um I didn't, no one was saying I was an eight. It was more, was I a nine or was I a four? Um, and I, I, it took me a long, long time. I think it took me a long time because I'm not, even though, you know, I love laughing, got a great sense of humor, that side of it, that instant kind of, I'm not an instantly jolly person. I'm quite um, a serious person. And 
so the, the the sort of seven kind of fun upbeat stuff didn't instantly resonate um it took a while and i think what what is exactly what chris was saying it's that you know the opportunities it's the um, sort of ability to link to make connections everywhere to 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 see to meet people to be able to join them i mean it's that kind of networking skills it's um you know the excitement of realizing one bit of learning that you've got could link up with another bit of learning that you've got so all that going on all the time you've got this very busy active mind and so it took it took me a long time to realize that i was a, a seven so a long time is like weeks uh, yes a of... long time in seven terms <laughs> so we just, we Five just minutes. Just... <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah it was probably just yes uh, you know a weekend, a weekend. <laughs> exclusive <laughs> jesus yeah it was one of those like a life sentence really <laughs> so, um and, and then it just has helped me enormously since i mean i sort of <laughs> you know, suddenly understood why I'd been, you know, sabotaging my life and my careers all the way down the so line. So explain that in more detail then. So you, you felt you'd been sabotaging your life and your career. And so how did discovering being a number seven actually take you out of that? Well, um, I, st I mean, I'd already, when, when I found out, when I got into the Enneagram, I was in my um, 40s and I'd already had... Um, my first career was as a graphic designer then i'd written how to books but even though that sounds like a career they were how to books on looking after your home they were how to books on the royal family they were how to books on stain removal the Hang kind on, of you wrote a book how to on the royal family yeah how it was all about the royal warrant holders so how to live oh. your life like the royal like family, the royal family. Okay. so i'd had um experiences in in lots and lots of different fields you know, and anyone else would have stayed an expert in one field, but I'd written a book, got bored, move on to the next topic. <laughs> so, so um, you know, I'd covered sort of 15 topics of books and, uh, and was never sticking. You know, every time something was about to happen that I could write more books on the same subject, I went, no, I don't want to do that, done it, you know, been there, done that. Okay. And um, and I think when I when I realised that actually that was a really sort of deep part of my personality and I was going to carry on doing that forever, I started um, thinking about what I loved doing and how I could put all the things that I loved doing into one business, if you like, something that would actually be exciting enough to sustain me so you throughout went everything. In yourself to see what you really wanted, and then you came from a forward from a different space is that right absolutely yes mm. so it was it was saying let's not just do things for instant gratification let's actually okay. think about what's going to reward me long term so um and and something that's big enough that all the things that i get interested in can come into it and be part of it so and that was an like enormous you slow help down a bit, a bit less frantic is yeah, that right? yeah, definitely. Less, yeah. less frantic, less, um, you know, after a kind of instant hit, it was, it was a much, became a much bigger sort of more conscious process. Right. Okay, Daniel, with you, how did discovering your number seven actually affect your life, change your life? Um, I, I think around giving me some framework um, around things that I thought weren't normal that I was supposed to deal with and eradicate um, actually I understood w were part of my character um, and a great example is choosing at a table at a restaurant it can be quite excruciating I sit down and I think I'm on the wrong table that table over there is so much better um, and to be given the space with my partner to sort of say okay we can move there and you're allowed one more move um actually sort of freed me up to be me um that, that that was part of my nature um and and really resonating with what nina's saying career-wise of thinking i was supposed to become a specialist in something but actually finding i would you know do something once i'd like to learn it i'd like to do it a second time and be good at it and after that i didn't need to do it again um, I was ready for the next thing. Um, this process of change, was it difficult for you? No, I don't think so. Um, okay, it's like a natural... Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was freeing up what was already there rather than trying to change into something. 
I, I think I'd been trying to change. Um, this allowed me to be me. Um, so there's sort of an excitement in that. See, it seems that both of you, in fact, all three of you, pretty quickly got real value, if you like, of finding you were type 7. Yeah. yeah I, it's I improved really your life. Sorry, just really enjoyed hearing about the table, because my husband now says, you choose the table. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just <laughs> so used to me not liking several tables yeah. and having to try them all out. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's really... And the best is, is being able to share dessert because I hate yes. limiting myself to one dessert. So if I can share dessert with everyone else on the table, I've done. Yeah, so your absolutely. dream is these restaurants you can find sometimes that give you like almost a compilation dessert. Yes. And it yes. has like <laughs> eight desserts on the menu. You have a little <laughs> yeah. bit of eight all in one deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love that. And eight platters. starters and eight mains. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, but you said like nature. You said it, you know, it, it was something by my mind. Do you think it's nature or do you think it's, it's more, you know, learned traits from... I think it is nature and, and my teaching of the Enneagram is also that it's nature. Yeah. The, um, I think unlike the Myers-Briggs, for example, where we can sort of change types, in my understanding, the Enneagram, Enneotype, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, that it's, it, it's part of how we've dealt with our growth. Um, mm. And it's it's sort of the viewpoint we always have. But is that nature, um, or is that just you know the environmental nurture? Again, I think it's nature. Yeah. It, it, I think it's how we almost deal with the separation from the breast. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, you know, I, I was sort of reading Sandra on the way here, Sandra Matry, and, and, and she describes it in that sense. Really. Um, and because sevens, it, it's the painful quality of the seven is always pursuing an experience we think we've had. Um, you know, because I, I had that great dessert at one point in my life, and where will I find it again? Right, right. Um, and you, so want to, you want to better it somehow. Yeah. It's almost like it's out of control, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a, a greed, a gluttony. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and that part of the, the life journey of the seven is finding the nourishment that we had on the breast. Right. Uh, because, you know, I remember feeling really loved and warm there, but where do we find that in life? Uh -huh. Interesting. Um, I just want to go through back to a few basics for people that maybe are watching this, mm -hmm. have never heard of the Enneagram before, and are just wondering whether they're a number seven or not, a type seven or not. <laughs> I got pulled up once before saying number, it's type, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and we should just explain that um, even if you're a type seven, you would still have uh, parts of the other type in you. It's not as if you're just that type, but you are mainly that type. Yeah. And some of the things I wrote down, my, my notes from, from books I was looking at um, for my research was basically type 7s enjoy life, they're uninhibited, they're optimistic, they're busy and energetic, and you all three display that quality. You take risks. Um, I guess coming on this program is a risk to, to some degree. You like to keep moving. You're easily bored. You've all pretty much covered that. You like yourselves. Do you, do you like yourselves? I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you're not, you're, not, you're not quite so sure about that one. Yeah, because again, I, I think I, it's this green grass syndrome for me of, oh, but it would be better to have that quality. Um, so mm. it's that sense of, ah, oh, yeah, dark hair. I think I'd like lighter hair. Lighter hair seems like more fun. Um, <laughs> you like yourself, but yourself can always be better. Yeah, I don't know about liking yourself. I, I love talking about myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Centre of attention, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Camera back to me. Exactly. I don't <laughs> know that that necessarily means I like myself. I okay. like hearing myself think and talk. Uh, I mean, it's like my husband's a, a, a type nine. The radio's always on in his world because he doesn't want to think. He mm. doesn't want to hear himself think. I never have the radio on. It's, it's always so I can enjoy my thoughts. So I enjoy bits about me, but I don't know that I necessarily like them. OK. If that makes any sense. OK. Yeah. Just going down my list to try and cover as much as we can of, of what a type seven is like, signs. They're idealistic and want to contribute to the world. Yeah. Is that something you connect with? Yes. Um, you love excitement and travel. There's not enough time to do all I want. You very much covered mm. that. Like being outspoken and outrageous. Is that oh, something? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, how, definitely. So definitely. How, how would you be outspoken and outrageous as, as a Type 7? Um, well, OK, this morning um, I, in my business, there was, we had a, a breakfast for um, corporate clients. 
And um, once when I was in a corporate, I was talking about what success meant to everyone in the room. And there was a lady there who, to my amazement, she said, well, success to me is having a Brazilian. Now, I, I was absolutely I'm amazed. I'm guessing that's a type of coffee. <laughs> I was, I was amazed to hear her talk about that in, in a mixed public arena. So by repeating that story to some quite high-powered corporate clients, that's what I'd call being slightly outrageous with my grey hair. Okay. It's probably not what they'd expect. So okay. um, Good icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> good icebreaker, yeah. So I suppose that being outrageous, I mean, I think the risk-taking, the outrageousness is always... You know, I want to go slightly further than everyone else. We're having a walk or a picnic. I want to push down the beach. Um, we're in a boat. I want to row a little bit further than everyone else. So it's that kind of thing. It's always like, let's just do a little bit more. So maybe that's a bit outrageous. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, wearing outrageous clothes, but probably not as outrageous as a Type 4. So um... I've got a feeling Chris would have a good example here. What about outrageous? Yes. How would you be outrageous as, as a seven? <laughs> is, this, is this an X-rated show? Uh, I don't know. I mean, outrageous. It depends what you call outrageous. I mean, I don't personally think it is outrageous. You know. I mean, yeah, I just think that's what I'm getting at. Really. You know, so, um, something that you would naturally do that other people might be, you know, shot shot uh, in a minor way by, or even a major way. Outrageous. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I can really call things outrageous. I mean, outrageous would be stripping off and running down the middle of Pall Mall, you know, whilst waving a so it, banner it, saying, I fancy the Queen. I mean, that would yeah. be outrageous. But, I mean, other than that, it's just normal behaviour. Yeah, so you're naturally outgoing, basically, and other people might be have slight inhibitions about doing something for you would be quite ordinary in a way. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, I mean, outrageous depends what you mean by that, but I think, you know, like, getting up in front of people, talking, you know, I'm very extrovert in my in my you know, energy structure and what have you, so those sort of things are considered generally more extrovert and, you know, out there a little bit, are, are, are very easy for me, it's, it's very comfortable yeah. for me to be that way. Um, but, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, if if there was a... A thousand people there, and you know, you had a little group, and somebody had to go up and tell this group good or bad news. You know, it wouldn't bother me. I'd be, I would volunteer to do that sort of thing. You know, and then if they say, well, you have to dress up in latex to do it just for kicks and giggles, I'd say even better. That'll be fun. You know, so okay. So so far, it's all been very up, um, but there must be a side of the seven that is challenging for you. And those sevens can be ungrounded, they can get lost in things. Uh, Daniel, you hinted on this a little bit. So what's, what's the, I'm not saying the downside of being a type seven, but what is the, the challenge of being a type seven? What, what, what are the things that you find difficult at times in terms of your development, knowing you're a seven? Daniel, you're thinking away there hard. Yeah, and, and, and I think for me it is that being present and accepting what is. Um, uh, because under stress, sevens go to one, which is sort of the perfection. Um, so there's that desire in me, if I feel stressed, to want everything to get perfect. Um, so it's very hard for me to accept, you know, where I am at times and, and to, to enjoy where I am, uh, you know, to enjoy the job I've got rather than to dream of the... The perfect job. Um, so what helps you in that situation? I think now knowing that this this is a tendency for me um, and knowing that actually the fantasy of the perfect job isn't perfect, that it is a fantasy. Um, and and I guess increasingly Letting my energy come down to sort of, you know, remembering to breathe almost um, and, and to experience what is going on around me and, and detach from the story of what might be. So you mentioned being present. Yeah. Now, what, describe in a practical way what being present means. Um, I don't know. What is being present? Yeah. Certainly around my spiritual teaching, it's, it's kind of physically being aware of my body, 
you know, it's being here in this room, um, enjoying being with, you know, the three of you, um, rather than moving off into what's my journey home going to be like? What am I going to do when I get home? How am I going to tell people that I was on TV? Um, you know, and I can even feel my energy change when I sort of talk about the different things. Um, so, so for me, that's being present um, and, and remaining present is, I think, really tough for me as a seven. Yeah. At least that's my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, meditating I find excruciating. Um, and actually, I meditate now on my push bike um, as a way of kind of having movement okay. uh, and practicing being with myself. You don't close your eyes. Uh, no. no. That'd be a skill. <laughs> that's the advanced meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, so I think that's some of the pain for me of being a seven. So I, I guess we could say with being present, it's very much, you mentioned feeling the body, about being here, by being aware of if your mind is taking you away somewhere else. Yeah. And you also mentioned earlier acceptance, accepting this is what's happening and that's it, I guess. Yeah. That's what's happening now, the four of us together in a, in a studio in West London and we're talking about type sevens. Yeah. Chris, you're really bubbly and you're full of energy. Is there a side of you that you find difficult at times? <laughs> More than one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I definitely resonate with what Danny said, you know, the being present is... Uh, it's very easy not to be present, it takes a bit of work. Overwhelm is something that I experience a lot of, you know, a, you know, could it whether it could be having 15, 20 windows open on my computer and doing one task, and then before you know it, I've <laughs> clicked on an email, and before you know it, I'm half hour into a program and totally forgot what the hell I was doing, you know, which uh, it can be, you know, when you think about it, sometimes it's quite mad. Yeah, so I, I can very get consumed with lots, doing lots and lots of things, and that that can make me quite inefficient at getting a task done. You and know? how do you focus yourself? I have to give myself a talking to. I have to sort of just, you know, just say, hang on a minute, what's, what's going on here? Slow down, man. And, so there's uh, a side of you that's wise, and that wise side is saying to another part of you, slow down. In fact, what Daniel's saying really is be present. Is that right? Is that how it works for you, or is it different for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, more or less, more or less. Um, for me, one of the big components of, of being able to... Uh, be functional and as present as possible is exercise. I do a lot of exercise so that I have a good physical outlet for energy expenditure. And when I've had a good exercise session, then it's much easier for me to be present. You know, I'm much more centered mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, so then the, the living in the now is a lot easier, but, uh, but generally as what Danny said, I think that the, I mean, I mean, being present's not easy for anybody, never mind if you're a seven Enneagram, but it's a challenge anyway for anybody, I reckon. So that's the game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, being right here right now is, is uh, you know, easier said than done. OK. Nina, how's that, how's that for you? Yeah, I definitely agree with, with, with both of them. I mean, um, I think uh, what does it for me is... Well, is two things really is is reading and writing. I find those really calm me down, especially reading, and Mozart. I mean, listening to <laughs> listening to classical music really, or any music actually, just really um, brings me right to the present very very quickly. Um, so that that works. I think the the thing. The difficulty, I mean, I think Chris touched on that sort of overwhelm when your mind is spinning with ideas, your computer's flashing all sorts of different things that you've started and haven't finished. But the thing that probably is the most difficult is something that um, Danny mentioned, is is the idea of going into, into perfectionism. Mm. So it's very tough for people around me because I suddenly get, oh my goodness, you're dirtying the kitchen and you're just boiling an egg, you know, and that <laughs> snap at my husband for doing something which is really irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, but I've just gone into to sort of type one, seen him making a mess and, and get very upset about it. And I think that 
part of 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 being a seven is is difficult for everyone around us that we can (laughs) lose our temper very quickly Mm. and for for me i don't know about for you guys but i mean for me it's one second later i've forgotten about it (laughs) and they're still going especially if they don't know me very well they're going Whew, you know what was that that was just like a tornado and for me it was just nothing I mean I was just cross I vented my crossness and you know but it was yeah. I think it left everyone else around me reeling and I think that is very hard for people and I find it very hard um, I mean I know now you know there are certain things I'm just not there you know my husband cooking I'm just not there so I, I know now what my trigger points are but but I I think the only way for me not to do it is to absent myself not to kind of get annoyed with certain things and it is when it's when i'm stressed absolutely so it can be a challenge to be around a, a type seven especially in a close relationship in a I wouldn't have personal thought so. relationship <laughs> i wouldn't say that in myself no more than a challenge than anybody else i think it's a pleasure <laughs> i think it's a pleasure 99.9 percent of the time but yeah. when i lose my temper i think i mean luckily you know you're loved ones get to know you well enough they know it doesn't mean anything but i think you know it can be quite a sort of formidable force as it were um but maybe that's just me i'm not talking for them so the anger for you guys is an expression and it's clearing something is like an energy you clear and then back 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 to your normal life so to speak Mm, about a second later yeah Yeah. short and sweet I, i don't bear grudges don't get upset you know don't I mean, basically, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I really like people. I mean, I love meeting new people. I really, I find it, you know, I, I'm, I'm impossible to interview people if we need, if we've got a, a, someone that we need to hire. I can't do it because I would have everyone. I can see the strengths in everyone, and I can see exactly. Well, they might not be so good at that, but they'd be brilliant at that, and so it makes them exciting. So. I think on a ho- on the whole, it's quite f- it's quite fun to be around a seven because there is that you know real desire to find the positive in every experience, in every person, in every in every everything. Really, it's it's a fun place to be. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> you, you all do a great PR job for being for being a type seven. I have to say. Yeah. Yes. So, <clears throat> one of the things about the enneagram that I know for myself has been very useful, I discovered my type, was not only did I, did I learn that there, wasn't, there was a lot of other people on the planet that functioned very much the same way as, as myself, but also there was a potential of my type insofar as I didn't have to be stuck in, in certain behavioural patterns. There was, a, there was a, a higher way of being myself, if you like. And I wondered how, let me start with you, Nina, how that's affected you that that seeing that potential and moving towards and living that potential of the of the type seven gosh i think um i think it's really what we were we were sort of touching on earlier that kind of realizing that um it's a freedom to be who you want to be um and i think well the potential of the type seven it's uh, actually about finding that I don't know. I think I'm, I think we should go to Danny on this one. Uh, so <laughs> oh, I'm I just hate to take the line off, Chris. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I'm just trying to think. Well, it feels like it's all most of its potential. I mean, it just because there is so much energy and there is so much um, desire to do lots of good things. I think um, and lot, you know ways of helping people, ways of of um, creating sort of fun harmonious situations i mean i think so the potential is more to to keep to keep as as grounded as you can so that you have the energy to do these things you see what i'm trying to get at and and maybe this doesn't apply to you guys when i was doing my research earlier one of the things i wrote down um about the potential for the type seven was to move forward they have to confront their emptiness and barrenness they have to see and confront how much they live in their mind and I wonder is that can you relate to that or is that yeah definitely I mean I think I think well I mean these two are obviously wonderful at working out and going on their bikes and everything I mean I find that I don't even notice I've got a body but Uh, see this I'm interested in this which and and as I say I'm not trying to put something that isn't there isn't there for you guys but this emptiness and barrenness is this something you can relate to yeah definitely I mean I think um 
I, I think boredom is a real key thing that there's a real desire not not to feel bored yes <laughs> um, so, that, so boredom for you is barrenness is that is that right yeah Just describe boredom uh, for you boredom for me um well i mean I, I i don't know that i have it so much now because i think i've got more resolved it's something that i would dread a lot as a child that feeling there's nothing to do and what am I going to do and sitting, you know, for ages. I think now it's, if something sad happens, I can feel very, very desolate. Um, and, um, you know, as if I'm in a very barren landscape with, you know, nothing there, grey skies and just a, a real feeling of uh, emptiness and, you know, uncertainty as to how it's going to get filled ever so and are you okay with that feeling now i'm much better with that feeling yeah, yeah. is that something before you would jump over isn't it you, just, you try to get away from it in your activity and yeah. ideas and everything uh, and yeah. not want to lie there crying um but want to actually move into something positive and i'm now much better at just saying this is it and it doesn't last terribly long which is i mean in a way i often try and get it to last longer because i think I'm, i'll learn more about myself if I can okay. stay in that unhappy space for longer, but it tends to, you know, the, the happiness tends to kind of bubble up quite quickly. Um, but I think it is a good learning place when it happens. So I'm, you know, I don't mind if it does happen. Okay. And Daniel, how, how is the emptiness and barrenness for you? Is that something you connect with? Yeah, a lot. Um, it's interesting because I was, I was thinking I've, I've got a rowing machine and, and, and I never use it. And I was said to someone, the problem is, it's boring. Uh, it's excruciatingly boring. Um, and so I tried music, video, and they said, so what's wrong with boring? Um, and it had never occurred to me that boredom was something I could allow to exist. I presumed I was always meant to fill it. Um, that, that it represented a lack of stimulation rather than being a state in itself. So you judged it as a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was it was a really torturous place to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I do really relate to that barrenness, and and I think that's almost the moving tables in the restaurants. It's like I sit at this table and it hasn't completely filled me up. I still feel an emptiness. So maybe that table is going to satisfy me more. But okay. can you? What I'm interested in is, can you stay with the barrenness? And it changes without you doing something. Jesus, Ian, come on, move yeah. on. It's just a <laughs> nightmare. Sorry, Danny. Can Send I you. stay with the barren? Come into you on this in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still judge it as a bad place to be. Mm. Um, it's, it, yeah, it, it's not a place that I want to be and stay. Um, and and even yeah almost like this, the nature of this discussion I'm thinking so let's move so on let's to <laughs> the, the fun bit um, you see according to these books this is the gateway to the freedom for you type sevens if you believe them yeah yeah so you t tell me about your barrenness <laughs> I think I'll blink and I'll miss it yeah what's the question what's the question it's a specific question. Okay, let's let's change it. Let's no, make him suffer as well. Bring <laughs> it on. How do you see your gateway to your potential as a type seven? Mm. I think inevitably the. I think inevitably the gateway to express more potential more expanded awareness, more expanded consciousness, the way I see it as a, as, a, as a dominant seven, is to slow down and, you know, be more aware of that present moment. And I think, I mean, you could say that, I guess, about any type, but I think specifically for the seven, due to that desire for constant stimulation and always looking for something else and being somewhere else and having something else and feeling something else and seeing something else and all those things, the more you're able to just be totally present in the moment and anything that comes up accept it and let it pass whatever comes up experience it with non-judgment and non-attachment then uh, 
inevitably that is the the gateway from my, the way I view it to uh, to expanded awareness, expanded consciousness. But how does that work practically for you? Carnage doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just good at waxing lyrical. <laughs> I've read lots of books. Absolute bullshit. Are you, are you being totally serious there? Um, how does it work practically? Yeah. Practically, uh, I often quite say, you know, that on a, on a day-to-day basis, I have a range of an emotional scale from totally in, enlightened bliss and really present to everything that goes on to absolute dysfunction and madness, where you completely lost the plot and everything in between. So I think practically, um, it's it's just it's just work. You know, it's not that easy. You just have to have a set of practices that help you uh, live live as present as possible. Eh? You're theorizing and taking. I'm trying to I'm trying to feel another well, uh, side of you. You see. So the question is, what 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 pra- practically? How practically do you realize the potential of a number seven? of the type seven by going through your gateway and, may, and maybe it's not appropriate for you the question I'm not trying to pin you down how practically do I experience it yeah um well like I say I, you know on a day-to-day basis that's really what I mean you know on a day-to-day basis I can be totally present totally aware totally really in the moment and and be an interconnected part of a grander whole and really live from that space, walk that space, breathe that space, and then the next thing I know, I'm half an hour down the road, and I've totally lost that yeah. that that that, okay. that way of being, and I'm I'm yeah. I'm all over the place doing lots of things at the same time. So you know, I mean, that's that's the reality of my sort of day to day, week by week, breathing and living on this spinning planet. Yeah, <laughs> and, and okay. I think um, often, even though sevens like talking about themselves they often don't like thinking deeply about themselves because there might not be anything there and i think that that is what often can keep us kind of more superficial if you like because that might be the emptiness inside that there there aren't great um you know when we experience things we don't do them in the same kind of in-depth way that maybe you know a four or a six is doing it where we are living more on the surface and enjoying kind of fun and superficial things that maybe that maybe we're not as in touch with our emotions as other types have. Well, I don't are. know about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, the superficialness compared to other types, yeah, but as far as in touch with the emotions, I don't know about that. No, but the superficialness that, that if you start digging deep, if someone does start really asking us about the, the dark side. Uh-huh. It's hard, it's hard for us to actually talk about it because we're not quite sure we understand it because we don't really like going there. Yeah, like I why think would that, you, sort of thing. Why would yeah, you, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I think that's the, that's the um, maybe the, the, why you're having difficulty with the questions because it's something that we find difficult to express ourselves. Yeah, plus Ian's throwing his own type over the questions, you know what I mean? So it's not right or wrong, but that's, you know, that's, that's how it, it and rolls. Because I'm wondering in this too about the path of integration, which for seven is into the five, uh-huh. um, which I tend to always generalise that the seven is sort of quite extroverted and the five is quite introverted. Mm. You know, I think the five is quite self-sufficient. They like to bring knowledge and calm in. Uh, and I find that state, you know, I, I find, I've often been confused about whether I'm extroverted or introverted because mm. I had this very bubbly outgoing bit and then I need to kind of recuperate. Mm. And for me, that's the feeling of going towards the five, mm. Um, mm. of, of recharging, finding my self-sufficiency. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I quite connect with the bit about not, not knowing myself or not wanting to know myself. I find there's a lot of inquiry for me. Um, and yet, yeah, I also get to a block of like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to that bit. Mm. Um, and I think part of my potential feels like it's around joy. It's how I take the fun of being the seven, but to really experience as joy rather than just stimulation. Because um, mm. it feels like, you know, there's a lot of fun to be had as a seven. Um, but to truly allow that fun rather than looking for the next fun. Um. Yeah, and I mean, I know exactly what you mean about the, the introversion and the extroversion, because, for example, 
my Monday to Friday diary is always absolutely full. And if it isn't absolutely full, I'll wonder why. And if <laughs> I've got anything booked in on Saturday and Sunday, it really upsets me. I like, mm. That's my real personal time where no one is allowed in. Um, and, and, you know, I just want to be, that's the five. I'm going yeah. into my five and, you know, holidays don't, you know, just want to be with a book on my own. Yeah. Reading quietly or listening to music or something on my own. So it is definitely that kind of, there's the public bit, which everyone's allowed a part of. And then there's the very private bit, which is just really for me. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel, I feel it, it's coming out now. Maybe that the, the phrases I use weren't the most helpful phrases. Yeah. But you have, you have, you all have, <laughs> Chris will come back here in a minute. But you guys, you have a quiet side, which is a kind of a, a recharge side, is that right? As you say, a reflective side. And it's helping to balance all this activity going, 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 doing, doing, doing. Mm. And sometimes for me, that transition can be quite rapid. Uh, and it's taken me a little while to realize the world can't always read that. It's like, yeah, yeah, loving the attention, loving the attention. Hey, leave me alone, leave me alone. Um, and that people get jarred by, for me, that quite quick movement. Mm. Um, you know, I don't know how rapidly you feel. Oh, yeah, instantly, yes. Um. Yeah. And I, I don't like talking on the phone, even at weekends. Yeah. Just really don't want to pick up the phone. Oh, my God, yes. Because <laughs> everyone says, why don't you answer the phone? I'm having me time. Oh, yes, exactly. So there's um, this very, very selfish side that yeah. you just absolutely have to regroup. Yeah. You, Chris is looking... Are you... <laughs> Any of this resonate? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say you know what you mean. It doesn't sound like it's your. But it, does it resonate? Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely like those quiet times. Those times where it actually feels nice to just be on your own, recharge. I know what you mean about the phone. You know, quite often I don't even bother with it, picking it up or whatever. But uh, yeah, those, those, those. Uh, Reflective times and meditative times are, are very, very useful. Very, very, uh, I find energy balancing. You know, so I, 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 I know, I know what you mean. And I think it's not even reflective or meditative for me. I think it's just going to have to be on my own. And yet there is a real dread about it before going into the weekend. The thought that I've got a blank diary is very, very scary, because what if I get bored? So, um, you know, there's that whole sort of, I am dreading this, and yet the moment it happens, I just think how wonderful that I have this time to myself. Yeah. But it is, um, it, it's definitely not easy to, to, so to want it. It takes courage to, to allow this time, because you, I think you're right, in our modern life, you have to really put in your diary kind of a line through a day or something but otherwise it does get filled up yeah and there and, and there is a, a a fear that i'm going to be on my own and lonely and unhappy and i don't want that to happen so somewhere you still have a program in there that that says you know, daniel's nodding as well that yeah. if you're on your own it could be you're lonely and unhappy yeah, yeah. and i think that's the barrenness that mm. you were referring to in your question yes yeah you guys seem pretty well balanced, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Just the power of the seven. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think we should explain a little bit about the other influences. You mentioned the five. Now, as I understand it, the major influences on a type seven would be the adjoining types, which are six, which is more a fear-based fear um, personality, yeah. and the eight, which is more domineering shall we say like bossy personality so are you are you aware of those influences I th you, you've mentioned the, yes. the reflective side are you, you're more on the eight side are you would you say yeah yes. I have a very strong eight uh, I mean the number of times that I've, I've taken Enneagram tests or read you know the, the real themes and dominant traits of seven and eight it's very very close for me to you know it almost feels like 51 percent seven and 49 percent eight um, so those, I, I resonate a lot with the eight, the uh, the sort of dominance and the, the drive and the pushing forward and not hanging about, not messing about. I, I feel that very much in my way of being an energy structure, so I have to be sort of aware of that, you know. Uh, I, I don't feel the six so much. Um, in fact, the six sometimes drives me mental, you know. It's, <laughs> it's just that whole... The, the whole energy around that sometimes you think, Jesus, come on, let's, 
let's get going, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hopefully, I'm, I'm aware of that. But uh, I, I, um, yeah, that the, the, the that eight's a strong trait for me. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I found so valuable when I first found out about the Enneagram and I found my type, which is six, so I would drive you crazy and I'd drive you a bit crazy, <laughs> is, is the, it's not so much learning about myself, that's been very valuable, but also learning about other people because it's so helpful in relationships with other people. And I've said this before on these programs, if I have a problem with a person, I try and work out what type I think they are. And I might get it wrong, but it doesn't matter because it can still help in my relationship with them because I'm thinking well I'm now putting my head in their head or my heart in their heart and finding out well why are they the way they are and I think that's a, that's a fantastic thing from the Enneagram I don't know whether you've found a value as well in in understanding other people's types I do a lot I'm in business with three others um, and I think we've got a four an eight and a six and, and I think it's really helpful seeing the energy as we work together um, that, you know, I think the six is, is quite risk adverse and quite conservative and it's easy to dismiss that um, until sort of really allow the understanding of the fear basis. Um, whereas, yeah, the eight's kind of act quite action based. So can we keep moving? Can we keep moving? Um, and, and then the four sort of more emotion based. So I think it's a, it's a really powerful framework for observing people. Um, and certainly I... I think my superego is quite caught up in right and wrong. Um, so what's the superego? It's sort of the, the inner critic. Uh, and I think, I think sevens have quite so, a strong okay, let me inner just critic. Get this clear. So when you say inner critic, what you mean is... I'm not sitting in the right way. Explain. So it's, a, it's an internal voice criticising yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's a okay. constant judging of this is wrong, this is right. Um, that, that answer was wrong. Um, that Nina's answer was better than my answer. Um, so, so that constant dialogue. Well, that's more going towards the one, that's is the it? One, the dysfunctional yeah. I was one. Say, I, I, would, I would feel that when I'm stressed, but not otherwise. <laughs> but let's so, just yeah. stay on that. For people that don't know what the super, super ego is, that's yeah. maybe very helpful. You know, I actually do know. I'm just asking the questions yeah. just to bring it out. So, Because my super ego is already saying, oh, no, so I've said the wrong thing because <laughs> Nina doesn't have such a strong super ego. Um, so we all have this internal critic we picked up from our parents and our basically when we were very young. Yeah, and, 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 and society. Yes. Society's rules, our parents' rules. And um, we've learnt to criticise ourselves, which yeah. isn't actually very helpful. No, it was really helpful when we were little. You yes. Know, we needed that it's wrong to jump on the road, it's wrong to play with matches. Um, in adulthood, we have a, a more innate sense of what's appropriate. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, still, uh, certainly I've still got this constant voice. Uh, evaluating. I wonder if Chris has. Have you still got a super ego? Have you moved past all that? Oh, well beyond it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can resonate with that a lot. That uh, that um, critic, that inner critic. You know, the is there a better way to do it? Should I do it this way? Blah 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 blah. blah. I, I can resonate with that a lot. It, I have to sort of, uh, as much as possible, aim to you know, just let that be sort of thing and move beyond that. But it, it's definitely... Uh, so you put it to one side, you let it keep chattering away, but don't give it any kind of attention and notice. Is that right? I, I wouldn't say I, keep let it, I let it keep chatting away. I just sort of aim to just acknowledge it and then just let it, let it go. Okay. You know, I don't want to particularly hold on to it like any of those good or bad traits for that matter. But um, I, I, can, I can, you know, I, it, it definitely resonates that little... And sometimes it's very annoying. <laughs> you know, it it really is. Uh, it just under stress situations, I think, can get, you know, can really amplify the stress. And so, as I say, sometimes it's easier to just let that go and and observe it and and perhaps, you know, acknowledge it easier than others. You know. Mm. Okay, I'm looking at a clock. The clock there. We have about sort of three or four minutes left. Um, Champagne then. <laughs> So that's a good that's 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 a, a good trait, isn't it, for a for a, for a type seven? They like their champagne. I love it. They like their uh, <laughs> they like I'm their high living. A bit of generalisation here, <laughs> maybe. I I, mean, I don't really drink very much, and I I personally don't like champagne. But but I'm, I I don't I don't. Do you don't like know, other but... fine things though, do you? 
Um, I love eating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. you like we haven't touched food. on the gluttony. Yeah, yeah, we, no. yeah, we because, should. Because the sin <laughs> of the seven is gluttony. Okay. Mm. Um, and yesterday's chocolate cake really attested to that. <laughs> Uh, so I think, it, and I think that's part of you know this. It's this constant feeding of desires, uh, you know, new experiences, new excitements, yes. food. Um, and that's one of the dangers of being a type seven that you get indigestion. You get you get <laughs> too much food, too much alcohol, yeah. too much sex, too much of everything, really. Yeah. But it seems that you guys are all pretty much on your journey to uh, at least recognise that and, yeah. and move beyond the too much success anyway yes and enjoy what excess you have anyway yeah okay i'm just going to do a little plug for some of the books that i found very helpful on the uh, enneagram if you haven't heard of the enneagram before and want to know more about it the enneagram made easy is a very basic one but i still get a lot from this i find that it's some some cartoons in there some basic questions and it's uh, for a starting point it, it's great um, and there's two books by Sandra Maitri, which are, are very good. They're, they're more advanced, if you like, than the uh, ladies. It's the Enneagram of Passions and Virtues and the Spiritual Dimension of the Enneagram. I found both of these very good. And quite an advanced one is Facets of Unity by A.H. Elmas. There are many different types of books on the Enneagram, but I would really urge you, if you are interested, to... Uh, to start a journey somewhere and, and get one of these books. So I'm going to thank you all for coming in to Unconscious TV and being very forthright and being very much your type, which is brilliant. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get out of you. Mm. Be yourself. You've all done that in your own unique way. And so thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for watching Conscious TV. We've made now three programmes in the Enneagram series on different types, and we shall complete the set and do the other six. And we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.